round of applause over to you ca tr rajesh thank you vijay ji uh, i think uh, that's the I, i should thank you for the wonderful introduction you gave about me uh, in fact he has what you rightly said uh, you are one among the few uh, what i can say initial clients premium clients which we served uh, that's great uh, so i think i would firstly like to thank uh, uh, the rotary for giving me this opportunity to share my whatever the knowledge and experience in this particular area uh, in this regard just uh, excuse me please one minute yeah sorry i was just trying to settle the internet connection issue but i think so uh, would it be fine uh, mr ajay if i put off my video for the having a better clarity in my voice would that be uh, fine no i uh, yeah, you're uh, very uh, clearly audible now rajesh ji i think you okay. can continue okay okay fine fine right i think uh, uh, when uh, vijay sir asked me about me uh, talking i mean presenting uh, my, myself in this particular uh, audience uh, uh, in fact uh, i felt it would be very good uh, if this program would have happened physically so that i can share my uh, thoughts and experience with you all and i would have got an opportunity to meet you all but unfortunately this uh, whatever the restrictions has uh, made us to meet uh, through this virtual mode nevertheless uh, uh, i take this opportunity and uh, take the things forward uh, in fact uh, uh, i have been uh, given a few topics because gst law is a very very wide uh, subject so uh, i have been given a few topics uh, which uh, i can cover within the time period of around 30 minutes given to me before i start uh, my specific topics i think uh, i need to just give a uh, current scenarios what is happening and uh, what is likely to happen in coming few months uh, for the presently this gst law is a law though said to be a one tax but actually it is multiple tax given in one single cover cgst sgst igst technically there are they are all separate taxes which as a businessman many of us may not be able to understand so critically when it comes to us but the officers when they are actually uh, implementing it uh, they would try to go in that technical manner wherein they do not consider this to be a single tax one two the state authorities and central authorities the approach of them are totally different many of us may be comfortable dealing with state authorities many others may be comfortable dealing with the central authorities each of them are experienced in their own set of fields let me tell you both of them are short of knowledge as to practicality how the certain type of business happens so in other words if i have to say both are not complete in all respect there is a lacuna in each of them when they approach any businessman as to the proceedings which they want to take care so when we as a businessman uh, when we meet them in the sense when they come across firstly we need to be aware that to what extent they are approaching us with what provision or a what authority is something which we have to be uh, cautious about because many of the actions which are being taken by the authorities are not as per the law i don't say illegal but not as per the law which means that there's a possibility that at a future point even there is some short payment etc there is a possibility that you can get out of that 
based on some technicalities which are involved therein so first and foremost thing when any notices do come please do not go based on your past experiences of vat law or the rest while central excise law or a service tax law because the law under the gst law is totally different further there is a specific method i have to proceed which they are also not aware of still because we are getting notices from the state where they are is quoting certain sections which are no way relevant to the proceedings which are they are carrying out so uh, that is a one more aspect which i'm just trying to say they are coming out with very very incomplete and improper knowledge and procedure so be aware that all what they say i repeat be aware all what they say may not be true and correct as per the law so uh, please take note of this and uh, having said this on a one part today the entire tax department is dancing to the tunes of the mouse the it sector whatever the gstn is issuing the reports they are forced to act upon it they do not have any discretion and many a times though certain officers do say that i am going to consider your thing and drop it if technically it is it cannot be dropped is going to resurface again i am repeating anything which you think that you can settle and close by giving certain information basic information and talking to the officer with influence etc those things can again resurface at a subsequent period there is going to be a time period of 5 years from the end of the due date for filing the annual return that was actually february 2020 was for 17 18 so from there if we count 5 years we are talking about 2025 so they have a still lot of time to go back and dig your records and reassess or raise a demand do a reassessment however if it is a junain cases they can go back up to 3 even 3 years even then we are talking about 2023 which is still long way to go and now all the authorities are out of their seats they are on the field whatever the enquiries investigation which were not done for last 2 3 year, i mean 3 years now they have started because most of the businessmen are going to get notices for audit <clears throat> second they have been getting notices for mismatch mismatch between the 2a visa vis 3b they are getting notices for the delayed filing of returns i have to just emphasize here any person who has filed a return after september 19 for 1819 or after april 19 for the year 1718 or after september 20 for 1920 or after september 21 for 2021 all those returns in which in those returns whatever the itc which is claimed they are denying it and this denial none of the authorities at the lower authority are going to give you a relief these matters have to be contested kept alive because my gut feeling and my experience says that these decision these issues are going to be decided in favor of the assessees in days to come but 
it's going to take time in gst still the tribunals have not been set up since the tribunals have not been set up the litigation is not going to end so easily and so early it is going to be a long drawn litigation this is one more aspect so now coming to practical side of approach as to any disputes real disputes which are there i have to say most of the disputes many of the businessmen would face is for the period 17 18 whatever 9 months plus 18 19 because most of the most of them would not be aware or some errors would have happened due to ignorance improper uh, uh, filing by the suppliers for whatever reasons so there might have been a genuine errors which would have been causing the liability so the my suggestion to most of my clients who come are this first if the amount is small try to settle and close it if because the cost of litigation etc itself may be higher but while you are doing it please do communicate that we do not accept we do not accept your point but however since the amount is not substantial enough us to take the litigation we are agreeing to pay however on principle on law we do not agree so this type of communication should go from you to the department so that at a later point in time also there cannot be any same issue of a bigger amount comes they cannot put you onto an estoppel saying that you yourself have accepted subsequently you cannot take a contradictory view so this is a, a very important thing which you need to know second if the amounts are bigger and you also know the tax needs to be paid one aspect in gst is there is no interest on interest today after 4 years for 17 18 if you are paying the interest amount is almost coming to 70% to 75% depending upon the month so rather there is a lot of technical issue in uh, interest provisions both on a tax liability and more so on a input tax credit in fact as on date as on date if i have to say there is no provision strictly to collect interest on irregular availment of credit and irregular utilization of credit they are proposing to introduce that provision in the coming budget i mean the finance act from here now i think maybe it will be effective from 1st january 2023 but will be effective retrospectively from july 17 so interest part of it if anything is there you say there is no provision or the provision is not covering this so i don't pay interest so what is the advantage of that so you will not be paying basic tax so the interest stops ticking whether you pay interest today whether and contest and pay the interest after 5 years the interest amount would be the same so as a businessman the cash flow issues would be addressed with this particular point which you need to be knowing any penalty when it comes to a penalty the authority is not going to accept your contention whatever you say as to the penalty and he is going to impose a penalty so any you have to contest for the penalty contest for interest and penalty and futuristically you will get a relief even otherwise my expectation is probably by 2025 there is going to be a one amnesty scheme which is going to waive all these interest and penalties for initial 3 to 4 years is what my gut feeling based on the past experiences which uh, i have seen so and also a lot of representations are going to go because the number of cases at that time is going to be a substantial because the department have started enquiries now and let me tell you any audit 
without any exception they go they are raising minimum 2 to 3 points and almost all of them subject to exception in cases are essentially a technical points so again one of the them is that you know 2a 3b supplier has not reported i have paid tax so i should get a credit like this there is going to be and most of them are going to contest this and number of cases before various authorities and the forms are going to be very huge once this statistics goes to the government there will be some representation and there is likelihood that they are going to uh, come out with some scheme to close all these cases at that time probably we will get a waiver of interest and penalties what i am just trying to see i'm just giving all the possibilities which can be there so as a businessman you need to be aware of this while taking any decisions of any of these proceedings which comes up so this was something which i thought other than what the specific topics which were given to brief and uh, brought to the knowledge of the members for their benefit uh, any uh, mr ajay should i take questions now at the end only i can take questions right uh, yes i think that would be uh, more ideal yeah. otherwise your yeah. flow could get interrupted is what i am no bro fine now up to this stage if there's any questions i can take now or i can take i'll take together together at the end no problem sure and uh, if uh, in the meantime if i can uh, request all the members to uh, uh, if any thoughts or questions queries that are coming you can write it down so that at the later part of the meeting we can take all the questions one by one maybe your questions could get answered during the process of the meeting itself so i request all the members to make note of your queries and we can take it in the later part of the meeting uh, back are to rajesh ji are also they can put in the chat box also if they are comfortable yeah okay i think uh, to the specific topics which were uh, given to me mismatch in eway bill and invoices uh basically i have to say today the most of the revenue generation other than the regular voluntary payment by the assessees from the department action is through this eway bill checking that to more specifically from the state authorities the intention of the provisions have been completely ignored the intention of this provision was to avoid evasion of taxes but that has gone beyond that they are mostly getting into too much technicalities say there will be some description error the address mentioned in one of the cases the address in the invoice vis a vis address in a eway bill there was the road address was not mentioned area only was mentioned they said the invoice is not matching with the eway bill so we stop and we seize the goods i mean basically det detain the goods this has become a hand twisting tactics because they have an authority to do unless they have been properly instructed by the commissioner saying that you have in what are all the aspects you need to seize otherwise you record it and take a proceedings but don't hold the goods see why they have to hold the goods if somebody is going to run away if you are a registered person you have been assessed in the state with the same authorities why should they actually hold back your goods even if they are holding back they can take a proceedings and release the goods on bond but none of the authorities are doing it and they are uh, uh, very very i mean going very very technical in fact i will take a one uh, instance which so happened goods came from tamil nadu the eway bill gets expired at 12 o'clock night the goods got the, the truck came to the premises that same lane but the driver doesn't know which of the shops in that lane so he's standing in that lane and there's a window of 8 hours for the person to renew the eway bill the shop opens at 9 o'clock the authority 
intercepts the vehicle at 8:45 saying that the e-way bill is expired and demands tax plus equal amount as penalty and uh, ultimately they see and they collect the tax that amounts also what i am trying to say in these cases what should be our approach see today if i am bold enough having a so much uh, uh, time and effort and money to take the case i'll take to high court there is no other way which i can go against this without paying tax and penalty otherwise the goods my goods doesn't get released so alternatively i have to pay that particular tax plus penalty release a goods then against that we have to file a appeal and today the appeals are not being heard for months and in fact years and even if you go to the appellate authority the first appellate authority mostly 90% of the cases that whatever the order passed at the lower authority is going to get confirmed now to going appeal against that to the next forum that is the tribunal the tribunal has not yet been set up forget about the case of pendencies of cases not even set up and uh, as of now there is a uh, lot of technical issue in setting up i don't think another one and a half years the tribunal will be set up so all these cases are going and to get stuck there and once the tribunal gets set up you have 3 months to file an appeal against i mean within that 3 months if you miss that deadline again you are, you lose that case completely you have no option so once you file appeal also the time it comes up for hearing okay so it's all a, we are talking about around 4 years minimum 4 to 5 years minimum to resolve this issue and we so many of us would have forgotten completely that this case existed and we had paid this and maybe by the time after 5 years whether the money value of that 2 lakh rupees which would have paid would have been a worth fighting or contesting is another issue which we will be coming across at then so i think this is a something on this mismatches so effectively prevention is better than cure uh, you put in additional resources or a systems or controls to doubly check to ensure that these matches and there is no discrepancy and second all other compliances of eway bill are met so eway bill is going to be uh, i mean new sense uh, thing but it's a inevitable so we have to bear with it this is as far as a eway bill uh, aspect of it additionally there is one more thing about tracking of eway bill vis a vis the what you say vehicles uh, tolls nowadays uh, the data from toll is being linked to the government portals so i mean government departments in fact i will tell one example how they uh, watch this and try to in a one case the goods are say coming from north karnataka it is destinated to bangalore the transportation charges is paid by the company to the transporter the consignee says boss i have a job worker who is somewhere in shirar somewhere why you bring it and take it you deliver the their own i send the invoice copy for the transporter there is a savings in transport fuel cost so he accepts he doesn't pay anything he takes a new invoice and new eway bill from the customer and delivers to his place few such consignments happened then they saw eway bill is supposed to that vehicles are supposed to reach bangalore but the toll data says those vehicles have not come to bangalore they are doubt they were doubting that there is only a bill trading or the goods have been diverted have not reached so i'm just giving sometimes the business uh, modalities 
which saving of cost etc which would have been designed may not go in sync with the gst compliances so be aware of it so that there is no issues or i mean these issues should not get created similarly one more issue there is something called a build to ship to concept many of as well as ship from bill from it's not only destination source also can be different from the place where you will be billing this as per the law only i'm telling why i'm saying this many a times many of the people may not be aware they try to simply create the complete circle through a raising of eway bills which is actually created only for the documentation purpose instead of utilizing this facility they try to create and put some vehicle number which is not there or some vehicle which is not moving there so and get into unnecessary issues which were would have been not required so they need to be uh, they need to get into how to fit in their nature of activity business activity into the framework of law and minimize their cost as much as possible is would be my uh, you know suggestion on that aspect of it uh the next point which is uh, asked is about sales returns uh sales returns uh, in fact uh, accounting visa vis gst there are uh, there may be a little different manner of treatment i'll simply take one example i have sold in the month of march 21 but the goods are being returned in october 21 as per our accounting term in our accounting aspect i am going to issue a credit note for sales return he is going to raise a debit note whereas gst law if i do this this credit note which i issue i cannot adjust the taxes paid and he cannot even if he is reversing i cannot take a input tax so what technically he is supposed to do for the purpose of gst he is supposed to raise an invoice like a sales but in my accounting my auditor says it's a sales returns how can i account it as a purchase he is he is not your supplier he is your customer how can you purchase your finished goods so there will be a conflict between your account i mean auditor with service your gst consultant or your gst team internally so you should clearly explain them these differences will be there and how to address that in the financials with service a gst in gst you should take as a purchase invoice he has to raise a sales invoice you should account it as a inward supply but in your thing you cannot account as a purchase you should show it as a purchase return so how you are going to manage depending upon your business nature of activity you have to structure your uh, transactions again you know uh, whether i need to follow this for across the board or only in uh, cases where after september i need to do it all depends on each individual businesses and how they are going to design based on that this can this has to be decided and structured so i think this is on the sales returns rejection of goods uh, rejection of goods is equal to sales return in one aspect of it but there will be many a situation where goods are rejected but goods are not returned goods are rejected when it is not written so he will not issue is only going to raise a debit note against me i would have so again the same problem comes in before september at least i raise that particular thing for deficiency he will raise a debit note i'll issue a credit note within september i can take a input tax i mean uh, my output tax can be adjusted provided he has reversed the credit on the other hand if it is happening after september he is going to raise a debit note saying that quality issues only for the basic amount not with the tax in fact the view which is there among the consultants is that any reduction of value without goods being returned there is no requirement of a reversal of itc so this is the stand point which is that which can be 
followed. This is also supported by a draft circular, which, which was withdrawn later, but the principles remains there on that aspect of it. This is about the third uh, issue, which is ASFA. And uh, uh, Mr. Ajay, you should tell me when should I stop because I will keep on going. Uh, no, no, you are, uh, uh, whatever you're saying is actually taking us into the flow. I am actually discussing simultaneously whatever you're saying, I'm discussing with my father yeah. also. So please, yeah, continue. Yeah, please continue. Uh, no, no, I'm telling if uh, no timing, I'm not keeping tab of time. So whenever you want me to stop out of time, you should tell me. Okay, right. Uh, accounting of debit note and credit note. See, uh, generally from the accounting terminology, debit note and credit note were understood to be a little different. Visa vis under the GST law or a language of GST law, debit note and credit note is different. In the sense, either debit note or credit note under the GST law should be understood only, only from the perspective of the supplier. I repeat, supplier, not from the buyer. If I am telling a debit note by the supplier, which means I have already raised the invoice charging GST, where I have short charged the GST, I have to increase the GST, then I will raise a debit note. It may be due to increase in the rate of tax, I mean, uh, increase in the price or price escalation, or I have short computed the value for all these reasons, I raise a debit note, increasing my output tax liability. So that is called debit note, which I also upload and report to the customer. If I report before September, after the financial year, the other person can take an input tax. If it is raised after September, you can anyhow raise it and pay tax, but the customer cannot take input tax. So this is something which you need to note. When it comes to credit note, you have already raised an invoice, paid taxes. Subsequently, you're reducing that value. Then you issue a credit note. The credit note can be with GST impact, can be without GST impact. When it is without GST impact, it is called as financial credit note. This credit note, when you can adjust tax, is only in certain scenarios, not in all cases. Scenario one, return of the goods. Scenario two, there's a deficiency in the service. Scenario three, the value which you were uh, charged is subject to change based on the agreement which was prevailing already on the date of the supply. Say, I say, I'm going to supply, but if in the financial year you cross so much purchases, I'm going to issue you a, a discount of so much. So the value is not finalized or it's subject to change. Then only you can issue a credit note. In other cases, issue if you issue a credit note, that will not be eligible for adjustment. So for example, bad debts written off the cash discount, which is not known at the time of supply, or he reduces after a supply without any prior agreements. In those cases, he cannot give back me the tax which I have charged. I cannot reduce and adjust my subsequent payment of taxes. So this is as far as the credit notes is concerned. Furthermore, before you adjust, the taxes paid on the invoices through a credit note, one of the essential condition is the recipient should have reversed the ITC. How do I know? I cannot. It is portal enables other way around. If I issues credit note for the invoice already reported B2B, it goes and sits in his portal asking him to reverse. But whether he has reversed or not is, I am not having any control. In fact, in few audits, they're raising this as a point and say, you have adjusted, but you do not have an evidence to establish that the, he has reversed the credit. So you have, whenever you are 
issue adjusting the output tax liability through a credit note please collect all the required documentation and evidences so these are about debit note and credit notes discounts received and given is a next point uh this discounts given i have already sold subsequently i am giving a discount as i previously discussed when i was discussing about the credit note you can issue the in those scenarios where i said the three aspects return it is not a return it's only at the before your supply itself you are aware that you are going to give a discount as per the agreements entered into then only it can get covered through a credit note for adjustment of tax otherwise you cannot get a in adjustment of the taxes already paid on the other hand any discount you give it on the invoice is permissible there is no issue in fact uh, there is there is a concept of quantity discount uh, not actually quantity discount what i mean to say is if you buy 10 i am going to give one more extra 11 my suggestion is don't mention that one item free rather compute a value for 11 pieces then less discount in the invoice the value of one piece that is clearly non objectionably is permitted and allowed so that you do not find any difficulties in future otherwise there may be a problem in those things they are going to say this discount you have supplied free of cost the corresponding input tax you will be ineligible can be an objection which can be raised <clears throat> discount received when it comes to receipt there is a, already a lot of debates going on with either automobile sector or it may be telecom sector or any other sector essentially these two there have been a divergent practices and divergent views i get an incentive if i get an incentive or a discount based on my sales not based on my purchase but i account that in the my reduction my purchase it is actually technically incorrect because this is my revenue not linked to my purchases though my accounting terminology is used the department is saying that this is independent of the purchases you have made so this is you are getting for a independent activity where it can be treated as a supply and the issue is debatable though few service tax we succeeded on various count but in service tax we succeeded saying that it is uh, it is in the context of the sale of goods so you sale of goods being not subjected to service tax it cannot be tax but in the gst both goods and services are both being tax either this way or that way there may be a risk factor be doubly cautious on these aspects of it i think i talked about uh, tracking of uable invoices uh, the last thing which is there bill trading and its consequences i do not know <laughs> how to address this uh, uh, only briefly couple of points i would like to touch upon uh, as a business requirement as a business requirement there may have been a certain manner of practices which would have been followed which is one type of that is called a circular trading that means my turn i to show more turnover to my bank so i asked my friend boss aapka sale jo hai wo route it through me so i will also get additional sales the goods doesn't come the nothing comes only the invoice moves and the payment is routed through me in all these cases the department is initiating a proceedings technically there is a lot of uh, difficulty to overcome this but at the same time 
there is a lot of lacuna also in the law where these cases are going to get you know finally reached whether they are going to take it finally say ultimately this transaction chain has suffered tax nothing has been lost to the revenue so leave this type of transaction from the clutches whether this will be the approach or are they going to go too much technically and say as per this rule you have taken itc without register of goods so that credit is not eligible on one hand on the other hand you have issued an invoice without supplying a goods so it attracts penalty there there is no tax one side they are going to deny you input tax second side they may demand you a penalty equal to the tax so there is going they may be a double hit on that so be careful on that so it is going to imply i mean impact substantially uh, many a past would have happened uh, keep your fingers crossed and if anything such things are there either you are in anywhere in the loop uh, but unfortunately many of us have been suffering because in somebody in the earlier uh, chain earlier of the chain has done this and have got into this loop but you are a genuine purchaser many a times such cases also are there where they are suffering you just put your foot down and try to contest at the end of the day you may you will get a good news is what my hope on that i think uh, the uh, asked me to cover hopefully i have covered all the topics i think there's one chat which had one question which had come uh, how to get refund from gst mainly amount of tds uh, this tds part essentially which wherever the government or anything happens you are supposed to log in into that portal and just select that amount and then you have to actually accept that particular tds and that amount will be credited into your cash ledger and it so happens that you have a sufficient credit you need not use the cash ledger for the payment of tax then you can always claim a refund of the balances lying in the cash ledger and recently there has been a clarification from cbic that such refund has to be sanctioned and you can apply and get the refund on that uh when gst is one nation one tax then can we use credit available in karnataka in adjusting liability in other states actually this particular part there is a uh, talk going on to transfer of credit from one registration to another registration but still not enabled it and again let as i said put it into a one pocket package and being presented as the one goods but it's not really so so technically all are different okay i think any other questions i, I think uh, i'm free to address those sir. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you, Rajesh. Uh, the floor is open for any specific queries or questions. So I request the member to members to unmute and uh, uh, share. Uh, you can ask your question. Any of our members have any specific query? uh this is uh, manish here can i uh, ask a question yes please go ahead yeah so mr rajesh uh, yes. my question was after the gst coming up do you feel the earlier taxation was better or uh, gst is better and although there are so many hitches which you have told and it is going to be uh, better in the future so vat service tax these type of taxes were uh, good from the businessman as well as the consumers point of view or gst go is going to be promising yeah i think uh, uh, if i have to address it very simply the concept is good implementation is getting bad the uh, entire system which was designed was good let me tell you uh, Uh, very aptly if any entrepreneur focuses just 3 months 
focused three months to put his systems in place as to the GST, then I think GST is not an issue at all if it is going to be overboard. However, you may face a lot of you know, questions, documentation, I mean, inquiries, letters. It, it is actually adding to a lot of work, additional work, I can say, as compared to the earlier loss. But over a period of time, it is going to ease out, is what my hope is. But five to seven years initially is going to be nightmare. And the impact of that five years may get carried away up to 10 years because you have to resolve all those initial issues. But it is a good law to be there and uh, very well thought. But implementation is getting bad. Technicalities is killing us. And there's a question. What are the real reasons for opposing GST? Multiple reasons. If I had to say a contractor wants to generate a cash, he's not able to generate cash. For what reason you would have understood? So, uh, 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 any other questions? Uh, Rajaji, now see, uh, uh, in the month of December, uh, huh. on the 31st of December, I need to raise a debit note for probably a uh, cost for delay payment or some freight or some expenses which was not provisioned for or uh, anticipated off. On 31st of December, I have raised a debit note on my customer and I charge GST, say 18% or 28% as the case may be. And I submit and hand over the debit note to my customer probably in the first week of January. Now I have, uh, there is a quarter that is involved. One is a month end. I have accounted for on the 31st of December. He is probably going to account it for in the month of January, if he's not accounting it for in the month of December, for whatever reasons. Now one is when the quarterly returns are being filed, the, uh, I am going to take it in the uh, third quarter uh, or the uh, and he's going to take it in the fourth quarter. So now there is going to be a mismatch. So how do I address this? See, any credit which is coming at a later point in time is fine. But as you rightly said, with this new concept, which is introduced from January 2022, that your credit will be based on 2B. It may so happen that there is a substantial, this amount, see, for I am a buyer, this is for the past, whatever it is, you have given me this whatever debit note for, say, 2 lakh of tax. I may not get overall credits in the next few months to come with to my, come near to two lakh anyway. So if I have not taken a credit in the month of uh, uh, December, I mean I'll take shift this to January. If then I can can I take in the next month is going to be a challenge. We do not know how this system is going to behave. Some of these structuring which has been done in the system do not understand the practicalities of the businesses. They are only going too much technical because uh, you know the, it only works with logic written there, not with the variations. These are the issues which are going to come, which will be addressed. Actually, there should not be any problem technically, I mean, sorry, legally, for anybody to take a credit in the next quarter. It cannot be taken earlier, but future, surely they can take. And are we back to the license, Raj? No, not really. Only thing, uh, you have to organize your business. You have to be more mm -hmm. systematic. Government expects you to do their job, government expects that you ensure your supplier compliances. So they outsource their work of ensuring compliances to businessmen. So they will ensure the entire chain 
to be operating correctly so that the government gets the revenue correctly one one question i had ajay yes sir yes please go ahead uh sir one uh, company whom i have supplied material in the month of january and february they had changed their gst number matlab they had changed from proprietor to partnership but by mistake my billing person has given put the old gst number to their account okay now the department i am not able to rectify is there any way to rectify it sir it if, it, of, like, if it is january lakhs, february sir. 21 you can't do anything sir a january february 21 that sort yeah because september so is there, month there is, is no over. way no way ah. but let me tell you that it is now ah. the war between you and your customer mm. the government has shifted its burden they are going to simply mm. go and say to your customer we will not give you a credit ah. your customer says your invoices are not reflecting to a i will not pay you or i will debit you that's what so government has put their recovery mechanism into your customers mechanism so, so no, june no... if if actually you are strong i am hmm. putting it other way around if you are strong your customer is weak and you force your customer i don't know all those things Or you had already collected the money, then your customer has to fight to the department, saying that they have paid tax. Give all those evidences to establish that they have received a goods, they have made a payment, and they you are they have filed the return, and you have paid a tax, so they can get a credit. There is a new car. a condition added that reporting in the portal from 1st january 2022 in my understanding that provision would be challenged in the court of law part of the suppliers mm -hmm. the recipient should not be sub, but we do not know where it is going to finally stand no 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 the mistake what has happened sir it has gone to their old gst number it has not gone to the new gst number hello correct sir can you hear me yeah now i can hear you sir uh in yeah hello no what i was just trying to say from your perspective uh, ajay ji am i audible uh, not very clear though hello Uh, please continue rajesh ji uh, rajesh ji i'm sorry you're not audible i, I think rajesh ji network is weak hello yeah rajesh ji please speak Uh, rajesh ji hello i think he is trying to re log in okay okay he is online but uh... okay now yeah now it's clear okay you can He has dropped. Yeah, I think uh, Rajesh is logged out. Uh, he may log in again, probably. Yeah, he he is trying to re-log in. So let let's wait for him. Yeah.
I'll just make a call to Rajeshji and check. Rajeshi's mobile is also not reachable. Uh, uh, I think Ajayji can uh, hear me now. Yes, 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 uh, yes, sir. Sorry, we lost you. In uh, I think that uh, network was an issue. So, yeah. Uh, no, I think I was Welcome. addressing uh, that question. The from the supplier perspective, as a player, you have done all your things correctly. Maybe there was an error in the uploading of invoice to the relevant just in registration number. Then we genuinely, uh, you would have suffix number instead of I number. You will have a time up to September after the financial year ending to make that corrections. Beyond that, the system closes. So the, uh, the department says, you are not done within the time, permi time permitted. Now you can't do. Now the option available for the recipient is to take a certificate from you that you have raised an invoice, you have supplied the goods, you have paid the tax, you have filed the return. But however, instead of uploading to this number, it has been uploaded to this number and that other person, the same person, would also give a corresponding declaration saying that we have not availed the credit on those invoices uploaded by so and so. So, with these two things, the recipient can substantiate his credit and take that benefit. But the question would be whether would he be interested to do that if there's a mistake from the supplier. This is how the practically things happen. Hope that I've answered your question, sir. Yes. Thank you so much, Rajesh ji. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I think we don't have, uh, do we have any other questions? So, uh, uh, Rajesh ji, I think uh, we've had a great session today. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the uh, time and knowledge that you have invested with uh, our members this evening. It's been uh, very informative, very educative really appreciate uh, you having accepted our request to be here today. Thank you so much. And uh, may I now invite our uh, director club services. Uh, uh, Rajiji, anything that you would like to add? No, nothing, nothing. I think uh, I've completed my deliberations. Thank you so much. So may I now invite our director club services, Rotarian Manish Bujavar for the vote of thanks. Yeah, thank you, President. So, with the great dispensation on behalf of the Rotary Bangalore Junction family, I would like to thank Mr. T. R. Rajesh Kumar, who has in a very minimum time explained us a very high level of uh, the concept of GST. Although GST is a very vast subject. In fact, uh, to just give you a lighter note, when GST was on the cards, when uh, it was supposedly uh, implemented and the discussions were on in the parliament, all our businessmen were tensed up and their wives uh, suggested them ki tension mat lena. we are already facing the GST. So everybody was wondering what is this GST all about? So their wife started telling GST ka matlab hai ghar mein saas ka tension. So aap bhi tension mat lena ya chalte rahega. So that was on the lighter note. And uh, the way you kick-started uh, Mr. Rajesh by giving the insights about 
the lack of knowledge that the officials own and uh, the way the tax uh, uh, officials come and harass the uh, businessmen, the way we need to bridge the gulf and uh, take care of the legal loopholes was really, really uh, very alarming. And it was a great input to all the uh, business community. You have also very well explained the uh, way you have to handle the notices, the mismatch, and also you have given some relaxation to the assesses by giving them ideas about uh, how to just handle it with the contest amount. And uh, you have also given a lot of insight about the interest component, which is again a hindrance and because of which actually the uh, businessman can be uh, taxed. And you also very well explained uh, that in the aid of technical aberrations, how the airway bills and invoices can be manipulated and how uh, it could harass the, uh, you know, the supplier and the buyer. And you have given uh, good examples to probably address this. At the same time, uh, you have also given resolutions uh, of you know, going through the tribunals, which are actually not uh, proper or rather they are yet to be implemented. And your example uh, on the toll data and uh, the you know, connectivity between the supplier and uh, the uh, buyer was really, really uh, a good input. You are also given uh, you know, ideas to handle sales returns, the conflicts, the adjustments, and if the goods are rejected, uh, how to handle it, the credit note, debit note, everything was uh, you know, really, really uh, probably enlightening. And you also gave us ideas on uh, how to handle the discounts. So overall, I can say GST being such a vast topic, but you have covered it in a very simpler language, in a layman's language, which we could all understand. Thank you so much for this enlightenment and we wish you good luck. And I request uh, Ajay Bhawala, our president, to share your number with our members so that offline they can connect with you in case they have any kind of specific queries. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rajesh ji, and uh, thanks Ajay for this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I should also thank all of you for giving me this wonderful opportunity thank you and the numbers i think uh, ajay sir can share with everybody